Hey folks, this is Alexander Wynn. I am doing my very first Instagram Live. So, uh, hello. Uh, looks like the man Gustav just joined and a few others. So hello to everybody who's tuning in. This is my very first Instagram Live. Uh, we've been doing some Q and A's on various platforms. We did one on Discord, we did one on Facebook, uh, a couple on Facebook, and yeah. So, just uh, checking out what Instagram has to say. Hello to everybody who's tuning in. We've got some, some good numbers coming in. Um, comment below and tell me where everybody's from. I'm always curious to see uh, where in the world everybody is. So, yeah. Um, for those of you who don't recognize me, my name is Alexander Wynn. I am the creator of Terra Genesis, which is a video game that you may have played about exploring space and terraforming Mars and other planets. So, yeah. Hello to everybody who is showing up. Uh, still getting used to the UI here. Uh, we've got some good Virginia and Romania and Florida. Um, <laughs> Catherine says that uh, <laughs> she wants a job. We'll see what we can do there. <sighs> Let's see here. Heather chiming in from Mars. Little Pig the Kid says, love your game. Thank you. Um, glad everybody could join us. I'm here to talk about Terra Genesis, answer your questions, uh, just sort of connect with the fans. It's my very favorite thing to do. So thank you all for joining. And um, yeah, uh, so we have somebody from Peru saying that we should make a version of Terra Genesis for PC. We actually have one for PC. Uh, you can go download it right now. It's available on the Windows Store. So, yeah, it's just like mobile. It's a free download, and um, it'll be good to go playing on PC. Let's see here. Uh, Michael says, love this game, and about to beat Mercury. Very nice. Very nice. And do, 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 do. Wow, we've got some good international folks showing up this time. Yeah, this is awesome. Uh, Berlin, France, Croatia awesome stuff. Um, feel free to post in the comments if you have any questions that you want me to answer about the game, about space, about, uh, you know, whatever. Any good movies? I don't know. So let's see. Uh, Catherine says, is there a bigger first-person version ever planned? Ah, uh, that, that would be amazing. That falls very much into the category of, like, if I could wave my magic wand and make it happen? Hell yeah. Uh, I don't know how, Let's see. Um, so basically, the thing that you have to understand is uh, I made Terra Genesis all by myself in my spare time. And these days, uh, we've got a little bit more of an operation. I'm actually sitting in our empty offices, empty because of, you know, COVID-19. Um, but this is where I come to film stuff because we have this cool little set behind me. Um, and uh, yeah, so... We've got a few people on our team, but in terms of making a first-person game where you can run around on the surface of Mars, that would be a really big undertaking. So hopefully in the future, yes. Uh, but in the meantime, um, we'll see what we can do. Let's see here. Uh, Mike says, never played the game. What's it about? It's about going to Mars. It's about uh, terraforming Mars. And for those of you who don't know what terraforming is, terraforming is where you take a planet like Mars where you have to wear a spacesuit to survive. You thicken the atmosphere, you warm up the surface, you add water, and you turn it into a planet like Earth. So Terra Genesis is a game on iOS, Android, and Windows where you can do just that. And it's all based on real science so you can see what Mars would really look like as it is changing and as the sea levels are rising and that sort of thing. Um, can you guys add pandemic crisis to the game? We actually already have one. There is a plague event, which uh, a plague can break out in one of your cities and you have to sort of lock it down or not. And it costs money, but it prevents the spread. And there are some choices to make along the way. Uh, let's see. Uh, love the game, man. Pleased to meet the creator. The creator is pleased to meet you. Uh, you should think about getting it on Steam. We have thought about getting it on Steam. Uh, to be honest, it's already on the Windows Store, which is... Uh, you know, probably not as popular as Steam, but um, 
it's already there and getting steam integration is actually a pretty complicated thing in terms of like all the little uh, APIs and stuff that you have to integrate so we may do it in the future um, but for now if you want to play on PC check it out on the Windows Store let's see uh, um, these comments are coming fast and furious I'm having to like scroll down to, to keep up with everything um, Catherine again, do you watch The Expanse? I do watch The Expanse. Although, funnily enough, I did not watch The Expanse when I made this game. <laughs> I actually only discovered The Expanse like a year or two ago. Um, I've been, I mean, I fell in love with the books as soon as I found them, and then I've been watching the show and all that. I'm watching the, the current show, the current season right now. Uh, really fantastic. Anybody who loves Terra Genesis and hasn't checked out The Expanse, check out The Expanse. It's exactly the kind of thing that you're gonna like if you enjoy Terra Genesis. But yeah, I, I had no idea about it uh, when I was making Terra Genesis. Uh, is there a Terra Genesis 2? Right now, we're just working on maintaining Terra Genesis 1. We'll see what Terra Genesis 2... I mean, I would love, eventually, to make a Terra Genesis 2, but we'll see when that happens. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, is Terra Genesis the only game you have made? Um, yeah, mostly. <laughs> uh, if you go look up Alexander Wynn, W-I-N-N, -N, on the App Store, on the iOS App Store, you'll find a few other games. Um, I made a whole bunch of apps. Terra Genesis was actually my 25th app on the App Store. Uh, and a couple of them were games, but they're real basic. <laughs> they're really, really simple, and there's, like, no art, and they're, you know, they... If you're in the mood for a game that looks like it came from 1982, go check out Espionage. Uh, it's on the App Store. You can play it. Uh, some people say it's fun. I actually had one friend of mine play it and get addicted and get mad at me because she couldn't stop playing Espionage. Uh, but it's very simple, so, you know, it's uh, nothing compared to Terra Genesis. Terra Genesis is, is the one, the, the big game that I've made. Uh, let's see here. Uh, is Sophia's governor name her real name, or did she name herself after Project Ishtar? Good question, and that's a deep lore question. Very impressive. Uh, so uh, they, she did not name herself after Project Ishtar, but rather they were both named after the same thing. So Project Ishtar is named after the, I think she's a Babylonian or Sumerian goddess, of both fertility and war, which makes her perfect for the Gaians. Uh, this sort of super weapon of the terraformers is named after the goddess of fertility and war. Ishtar is also one of the names of one of the main continents on the planet Venus, like in real life, if you go look up the map of Venus, Ishtar Terra is a, a section of the surface of Venus. So Project Ishtar is named after the goddess Ishtar, the continent Ishtar is named after the goddess Ishtar, and then Sophia's middle name, all the, all the Gaians have three names. And their middle name is their clan name, their, their sort of tribe within Gaian society. And each of them is named after a geological feature of Venus. So her middle name is derived from her tribe name. Her tribe name is derived from the continent. The continent is derived from the goddess. And Project Ishtar is also named after the goddess. So definitely related, but uh, not that directly. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Michael says there is a section specifically for questions, guys. I don't know that, so uh, listen to Michael. I can't offer advice in these areas, so, you know, do your thing. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to I'm gonna give you a little walk around of our studio real quick because I want to go grab my laptop to make sure that Heather isn't slacking me things with questions to answer. So this is the downstairs of our studio. Here, I'll flip you around. So we've got area to um, sit and talk about ideas and all that sort of stuff. And then we've got two recording spaces, one with a green screen and all that. And then we have the big set, which some of you may recognize from some of the YouTube shows that we've done. So we've got a few YouTube shows. I have a weekly vlog where I talk about, you know, Terra Genesis developer diaries and that sort of thing. And then also just talk about cool space stuff. And then we also have a show called The Synthesis which is where Lacey, who is my wife and co-founder, and I sit around and we talk about movies and books and TV shows and how they depict real science. So we did like Apollo 13. Um, we did Gravity. And right now we're reading our way through The Martian. 
and uh, we are having a really good time, so tune in. Uh, that's all on Twitch and YouTube. All right, and we do, in fact, have questions sitting here in Slack. So let's see here. Um, uh, oh, somebody asked, is the game different on PC than it is on mobile? It is not. It is exactly the same game. Actually, the, the, one thing the, the, the only things that are different on PC is there are a couple of things that don't work on PC. So right now, PC doesn't have the incoming transmissions. PC doesn't have uh, cloud save because those are systems that only work um, uh, on mobile. So we'll see if we can bring them in, but for now, otherwise it's entirely the same game. Let's see. Oh boy, I'm falling way behind. All right, so we've got a few questions. Uh, how do you feel about this game in general? Do you also play it by yourself, and did you ever imagine back then that this would evolve in such a state? Uh, I don't play Terra Genesis just like as a player, um, but obviously I play Terra Genesis a lot while I'm working on it. Like, you know, you add a feature and then you play for a while to test out that feature and that sort of stuff. Uh, how do I feel about it and did I imagine that it would be in such a state? You know, guys, I'm a pretty ambitious guy. I like to dream big and even I had no idea what this would be. Uh, we recently passed 20 million downloads. What? <laughs> um, this is a thing that I made in, in my spare time, like when I was home for my day job. So this is, uh, it's been a wild ride and it's been almost five years. How crazy is it? It's been almost six years since I started developing it. It's crazy. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, Robert, um, oh, I think Robert is talking about HAB limits. So Robert, unless I'm misunderstanding you, uh, you're talking about the population exceeding the capacity. That is just how many people can fit in the HABs. But if your planet is habitable, they don't have to live in the HABs. They can just go live out on the surface. So that's the difference there between HAB space and population. So the idea is that, for example, if your planet lost habitability again, everybody who can't fit in that HAB space will die. So that's just how much space uh, can fit the people and actually sustain them on an inhospitable planet. Uh, what's your favorite random city name? Oh, I've got so many. Um, but I'd, I'd say probably my favorites are the ones that are Easter eggs for franchises that I like. I've got some in there that are Easter eggs for uh, uh, the video game Alpha Centauri. I've got some from the Mars Trilogy. We've got some from the Martian and that sort of thing. But whenever I see somebody who has a city named Watney Crater or uh, that sort of thing, it, you know, it always makes me smile. Um, ba -ba -doo -ba -doo. Catherine is saying very nice things. Thank you, Catherine. I seriously, um, I myself am a praise based life form. So I am hugely appreciative of uh, people saying that they enjoy the game. Let's see. Uh, would you like to create another game with that theme? Yeah, I will never get tired of space exploration. So I could definitely see that. Uh, Let's see, how many people work on Terra Genesis? So I originally made Terra Genesis all by myself, just in my spare time. When it took off, uh, my wife actually stepped in and said, hey, listen, you're spending so much time on the code, like on the game itself, that you don't actually have time to like do hiring and talk to lawyers and stuff. So my wife, Lacey, who is brilliant and amazing and awesome, stepped in as the business head of our company and started hiring some people. We have since hired two devs uh, who have joined us and then they have each moved on for various reasons. So it's actually back to just me right now being the dev, but we're going to start hiring again soon. So if there are any uh, Unity developers in the Los Angeles area watching this, keep an eye out. We're gonna be posting a job listing soon. Uh, and then beyond that, we have uh, Heather who does marketing. We have Sophie who does our marketing and social media. We have uh, Deidre who's an administrative assistant. We have Tanya. We have, uh, Tanya's our UI person and illustrator. We have Ansley who does customer service. So all told right now, I think we're about a eight person company, nine person company, something like that. But a lot of those people aren't working on the game directly. They're doing like customer support and marketing and that sort of thing. Uh, are there new features coming? There are new features coming. 
and that's all you get. Uh, Vladimir says, how are you? I'm great. Vladimir, thank you. How are you? Always nice to be appreciated. Uh, do, 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 do. When are we going to be able to see our cities in 3D? As soon as I can hire more artists. Seriously, I would love to add that feature, but man, the number of, like, when you actually do the math on, like, I think there are, there are 36 facilities in a normal game of Terra Genesis, but uh, really there are 42, because when you play in biospheres, the biomass facilities disappear, and there are six that replace them. So that's 42 facilities, and each one can exist at level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 10, which means there are six levels for each of 42 uh, facilities, and then there are five factions in the game, and really, come on, like, each of the factions that have a different art style, and it's like, all of a sudden, you look up, and it's like, whoa, we need 500 different art assets for these things, and it adds up really fast, so, um, yeah, for a tiny little indie company like ours, it's a big ask, but I definitely want to, you know, get there as soon as we can hire the staff. Um, do, 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 do. Add Turkish language. We have Turkish language. Check it out. It auto if, you're, if your phone is set to Turkish, it should just automatically do Turkish. But if not, you can go to the language section in the control panel and switch to Turkish. I uh, love this game so much. Uh, Elena, pick me. I pick you. I don't know what that means, but there are a bunch of people shouting pick me, and so I pick you all. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see see here um so there's some people talking about the job uh, if there are any actual uh people like actually serious about actually looking for an actual job uh we're going to be posting some job descriptions on edgeworksentertainment.com uh soon like i think maybe tomorrow definitely in the next week so uh keep your eye out there's a careers page on edgeworksentertainment.com and we will post the jobs there and if you're if you've got the skills, I think the, the two positions that we're going to be looking for immediately are a Unity developer, so coding, actually working on the game, and then also an illustrator. So if anybody is an artist, uh, you can also keep an eye out for that. Um, so, oh yeah, see? Graphic designer looking for work. So we're looking for an illustrator, so I don't know if that how much crossover there is there. Uh, for you personally, how much illustration work you have, but you know, keep an eye out and um, look for that. And even if not, you know, we'll keep you in mind when we have a graphic designer need. Uh, do you like anime? I like some anime. I'm not a deep dive anime guy, but you know, I love Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and um, some of the sort of American anime, like Avatar, is amazing. I love Avatar, so um, you know. Let's see here. So we have some more. I'm, I'm managing multiple screens here. I've got like a little command center with a bunch of laptops and then also the comments coming in on my phone. So I'm like sort of working like Cypher in the Matrix. Uh, let's see. Are you going to add an atmospheric chemistry setting for the people who want to alter the atmosphere of their planet using, say, a biofixture lab? That is so... <laughs> I'm a big science nerd. I don't know if that surprises any of you, but um, I'm a big, big space and science nerd. So really, when it comes to adding features into Terra Genesis that are based on science, the only question is, how would you do that in a game? Like, how would you make that interesting and, and intuitive and understandable and all that sort of stuff? And I already, uh, have you ever played Portal? Yes, I have. Uh, almost broke a bunch of stuff, but, you know, great game. Uh, but, you know, I already added the Biospheres system in the game, which is very complicated and it's sort of, like, partitioned off in a separate section of the game because it's so wildly complicated. But it's awesome, and it's intricate, and it's based in real science and all this kind of stuff. And so that's kind of how a lot of this stuff goes is... Hey, you want to add gravity into the game. Hey, you want to add radiation into the game. Hey, you want to add pollution into the game or happiness. These are all awesome ideas. It's just how would you do it? And so with regard to atmospheric composition, ultimately I just decided that it was too much. There were too many different possible things that you could do with the atmosphere, like different chemicals that you could introduce and different effects that they would have and all that kind of stuff. So in the game right now, it basically just boils down to oxygen and not oxygen. You just need the right amount of oxygen in your atmosphere. But 
getting into like, you know, sulfuric acid versus carbon dioxide versus, you know, all this kind of stuff. Titan has a lot of nitrogen, but Venus has almost none and all that. It just gets so complicated so fast. So I haven't been able to come up with a way to do it like sort of as a game. Uh, and so that's why it's not in there. But as soon as I come up with a way, then yeah, that would be awesome. Let's see. Uh, could you add some more time to the limited time events? Uh, I would love to, but that's actually handled by our publisher. So I'm going to forward you over to Hunter, who manages the limited time events. Uh, yeah. There are definitely some easier ones and some harder ones, but um, yeah. Uh, Catherine, would you do an Expanse collaboration? I would love to do an Expanse collaboration. I actually have been sort of like pestering our publisher to try to connect us with Amazon so that we could do an Expanse collaboration. Um, there's so many things that we could do with an Expanse collaboration. Uh, my thing was to just do sort of like a reskin, like just a, a Terra Genesis Expanse, and instead of the four factions, instead of the Gaians, the Hephaestians, the UNSA, the Horizon, it becomes, you know, the, the Belters, the Earthers, the Martians, and the, you know, Horizon Corporation becomes Protogen, like, done. That's awesome. And you can do all sorts of stuff with protomolecule, and yeah, there's a lot of stuff there. Uh, let's see here. Um, who is the most difficult faction? Uh, you mean to play as? That really depends on your play style. Uh, the least popular faction <laughs> is certainly the Hephaestians, because the Hephaestians don't believe in terraforming. They believe in keeping the planet as it is, which is a big challenge, because, you know, it's easier to... Uh, terraform the planet, but keeping it clean, keeping it pristine is challenging, so probably the Hephaestians, but really it just depends on your play style. All right, will we ever get the ability to share random planets? Um, yeah, that's something that I have been trying to figure out how to do. It actually wouldn't be that hard. Um, so basically, for those of you who don't know computer science, uh, there's something called a random seed which is to say that any time a computer generates a random number, it's not actually random. Like, it's really hard to do genuinely random stuff. It takes, like, some supercomputers and stuff. So most of the time, when a computer generates something random, really what it does is it just generates something that is so ludicrously complex that no human brain could follow it. It's just an equation that's like, you know, you take a number and you do it to the power of 50,204, and then you take the cube root of it, and then you double it, and then you divide it by 15.9, and then you take the square root of that, and that's the random result. And so it's just like, okay, whatever. Um, but what that means is that first number that you multiplied and divided and all that, if you can add that num if you can plug that same number back in, you will get the same result. So there's something called a random seed, which is where you you know the number that your random number generator was working off of, and so it will produce consistent results. So for example, this is how like instant replays in Halo work, is they aren't actually storing every single thing that happened, they're storing the basics of what happened and then they're regenerating the animations based on the same random seed. Anyway, uh, when a planet is generated, it uses the name as the random seed. So if you generate a planet called like Ilifont, then everybody else who generates the planet Ilifont will have the same stats. So really all you need to do is be able to plug in a name for the planet and it'll generate the same planet. So I just need to figure out a way to do that. Um, the problem is uh, there's something in game design called TTP or time to penis, which is if you give the players a new feature, how long will it take for them to start drawing dicks with it? <laughs> And so I try to avoid that in this game. And so I'm trying to figure out how to have a thing where you can set the name of your random planet and people won't just be like, it's the planet penis. Because that's, come on guys. But we all know it would happen. So <laughs> let's see here, more questions. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Iman Economist, yes, Iman Economist rocks and uh, sent a question that says, was any part of Terra Genesis inspired by a certain Tom Clancy novel involving an expert counterterrorism team and the Gaia hypothesis? I saw, I think you tweeted that question a day or two ago and I saw it and to be honest, I think I have never heard 
of that Tom Clancy book. I honestly don't know what you're referring to. So the answer is no, but it sounds interesting. Uh, I've only read a couple of Tom Clancy books and I've never heard of the Gaia hypothesis, but you know, sounds neat. So yeah, maybe we will, um, maybe I'll check it out, but definitely not an inspiration for Terry Genesis because I never heard of it. Uh, next up, would you rather walk around Mercury or go climbing on Miranda? I would rather walk around Mercury. I think that would be cool. I actually really like in, in Kim Stanley Robinson's universe, it's, it's like a meditative thing going on this march around Mercury. For those of you who don't know, Mercury rotates so slowly that you can actually outrun the dawn. Like you can run faster than the sun is rising and so it can be night again because you, outrun, you outran the sun. And so in the Mars trilogy and some of these books, it actually becomes kind of like a meditative thing. It's like a pilgrimage. People go to Mercury and they just walk in the light of dawn forever. The sun is rising behind them and they're just matching its pace and they're just walking, you know, as a, as a meditative kind of thing. Uh, I think that would be really cool. I think that would be a, an interesting experience. Let's see. Um, why do ice caps on the planets look so small? It makes the planets look small. Well, that really depends on how much ice you have on your planet. You can have ice caps that cover 90% of the world if you have enough water and it's cold enough. So that's really, um, you know, just up to you, really. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, what happened to Hiroko? I, no one knows. There's a hint that maybe she shows up at the very end in the last scene. There's, a, there's an old Asian woman that's like on a beach in the last scene of the Mars Trilogy and that that might be Hiroko. Anyway, this is a, this is a question from the Mars Trilogy of books, which is fantastic. So definitely check out the Mars Trilogy if you haven't read it. Um, I'm really amused with Terragenesis, but I always wonder if facilities that adjust the atmosphere are possibly practical in the future. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're doing it already. <laughs> um, you know, that's the funny thing about, about terraforming is that we've been accidentally terraforming Earth for a couple of centuries, not even on purpose. If we were actually trying to do this, we would be really, really good at it. If, uh, if you're talking about sort of doing it rapidly, like how quickly could you transform the atmosphere, it's going to take a long time. It's probably going to take centuries or millennia to terraform Mars into something habitable. But, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're just talking about changing the atmosphere, it's all you need is like some gas and then you let the gas go and you just keep doing that until there's enough gas that it's changed the atmosphere. You know, the funny thing about terraforming is it's, it's like incredibly sophisticated sci-fi thing, but it's really all based on kind of 19th century chemistry. There's nothing especially complicated about it. It's the only thing that's complicated is how do you do so much of it? But, you know, generating water from hydrogen and oxygen, all you need is a match. You know, like a, a lot of this stuff is really simple chemistry. You just have to do it on a planetary scale and that's where the challenge comes in. Uh, sorry, can you repeat who the most difficult faction is? Probably the Sons of Hephaestus. The, uh, they've got sort of a red, almost communist looking uh, logo. They are probably the hardest, but it's really, it depends on your play style is who would be the hardest. Different people find different factions hard. Do, 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 do. Can we get a sandbox mode? Really, the whole game is kind of a sandbox mode. Like what, what would be different in a sandbox mode? It's just like infinite money, I guess. Like, yeah, I guess. I mean, really, let's be honest. Let's just be real for anybody who's actually played Terra Genesis for a substantial amount of time. There's already an infinite money cheat. It's always on. Anytime you get past like the mid game of a game of Terra Genesis, you're probably just drowning in credits. That's one of the things that I look back and I'm just like, really? I couldn't have just balanced the economy a little bit better. You know, people post screenshots like, hey, I've successfully terraformed Mars. And they don't mention the fact that like up in the corner, it's like, you've got 11 T quintillion dollars. It's just like, you, you sort of run out of stuff to spend money on, but you're still gathering it. So, you know. Uh, why is my planet completely white? Probably because it's covered in ice. Um, if your planet is cold, it's covered in ice, but here's the problem. Don't warm it up too fast because you will flood your world. So uh, check your water stats page and up in the top left, there should be a number that says frozen in ice. That's how much water will get added to your sea level if you warm it up. So my guess is that that number is gonna be really, 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 really high compared to your water goal. So build some water reduction facilities, like some ice launchers, get that ice number down, 
the ice will recede and you'll be able to see the planet's surface again. Um, boop, 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 boop. All right. We are catching up. Um, Chelsea and Heather, if you're listening, uh, feel free to post more questions in Slack. I'm going through. Oh, and thank you for doing little check marks. That's excellent. Uh, will we ever know about the Malay frequency buffer algorithm, or are you going to haunt us with this lack of knowledge? <laughs> I do it just to torture you. Um, there, there's a thing in the lore of Terra Genesis that everybody has decided is like the big mystery of this game. And while I did not intend it to be a big mystery, I really do love... <laughs> how obsessed everybody's gotten with it. I don't know, who knows, maybe we'll like do a Terragenesis graphic novel that's all about the Malay frequency buffer. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. Could you do an Elon Musk governator? Uh, I would love to if I got Elon Musk's permission. We have to get his permission to use his likeness. Uh, I feel like he would love it, but we haven't been able to get his attention to tell him about Terra Genesis. So if there's anybody watching this who has Elon Musk's phone number, tell him there's a video game that he would really, really love and we would really, really love to talk about doing like a spart uh, partnership or a sponsorship or something. We've even talked about doing like a SpaceX faction in the game that is, you know, sort of partnered with SpaceX, all that. Um, when you drive a Tesla car, apparently on the, there's like a big sort of iPad looking thing in the middle of the dashboard and you can play video games on it. Why is Terra Genesis not on that? Why is every Tesla player not playing Terra Genesis? I mean, come on. Or every Tesla driver playing Terra Genesis. Come on, that would be so dope. So if anybody knows Elon Musk, send him my way. Uh, what was the mysterious face on Mars? I don't know. What was that? Was it even real? <laughs> Hello from Brazil. Hello to Brazil. Hello from Los Angeles. A graphic novel would be amazing. I know, right? I would love to do a Terra Genesis graphic novel. Um, just working on the, you know, team working on the people working on the time and the money all right can we get a governor who reduces the cost of demolition oh that's cool i'd actually never consider the idea of a governor who reduces the cost of demolition that's i'm gonna i'm gonna put that in the hopper um in fact uh chelsea for those who don't know heather is somebody who works for me and chelsea is somebody who works for our publisher they are both among you secretly hiding, waiting, listening. Uh, but anyway, they're both there. Uh, Chelsea, if you could just uh, send that question on to Hunter and ask what he thinks. Let's see if we can make a governor who reduces the cost of demolition. That would be neat. Um, do, 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 do. Can we get an LTE which requires us to work with joint factions? Um, paradise status and certain population. Yeah, so that's a, the, like multiplayer faction or multiplayer events or that sort of thing would be cool, but like um, it's tricky just in terms of how the game is coded. Like it wasn't designed to be a multiplayer game, so having multiple factions on the screen or, or on, on the surface or anything would be weird. Um, like not weird like a bad idea, but just weird in terms of like I'm not sure how I'd pull that off in the code. It would be cool but it could get really, really complicated. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da. Hello from Poland. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, we'll see when we can add it. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, could you do a tutorial? Because it's a bit hard to play it, and if you want to learn on your own, it takes time because it's real time. Yes, uh, there is a tutorial when you first install the game, but also if you go to youtube.com slash Edgeworks Entertainment, we have a whole bunch of tutorial videos for Terra Genesis. So we've got a big, long, like, full tutorial video just, like, the walks you through everything, and then we also have a whole bunch of, like, one to two minute just how do you do this thing? How do I lower my pressure? How do I pause the music? How do I play Biospheres? How do I... All all that sort of stuff. Heather made a bunch of those videos and they're all awesome. So go check them out, youtube.com slash Edgeworks Entertainment. Uh, I see a whole bunch of people talking about landing on gas giants, which isn't really a thing because they're made of gas, so there's no land. Um, but yeah.
Why is my population infinite? Um, because your people keep having babies. Seriously. No. Uh, it's because l literally you've run up against the limit of the computer's ability to track numbers. Your population has gotten so big that your computer can't even conceptualize a number that huge. Um, okay, one person asks, is it possible for gas giants to have a surface? Not really. They're just gas. I mean, like when you go down so far into them, there is a point at which there's like a, you know, nickel iron core or whatever, but oftentimes those are either liquid or you've gone so deep and the gravity is so intense that like the gas itself, you know, at a certain point the clouds start to be like molasses and then they start to be like tar and technically it's still a gas, but it doesn't feel like a gas. And it's just, it's fluid kind of all the way down. Uh, so there's no practical way for a gas giant to have a surface that you could actually like land on and walk around in. It's just gas and gravity and awfulness all the way down. You could have like a floating city in the, in the atmosphere, but there's nothing to actually land on with, with your feet. Can we please have a death count? Um, I don't know how I would even calculate that. Population growth over time is easy, but how many people are dying on each given all that kind of stuff? It gets surprisingly complicated, like sort of, um, what are they called? The, the actuarial tables, that kind of math gets really weird. Let's see here. Um, hey, it's your favorite game. Thank you. Thank you for playing. And do, 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 do. Now I'm imagining trudging through goo. Yes, exactly. It's like that moment uh, in Ghostbusters 2 when Janos wakes up and he just looks around and goes, why am I drippings with goo? Yeah, well, that's what it'd be like to be on Jupiter. Except not really, because I'm a goofball. Let's see here. All right, feel free to post more questions. We've got about 20 more minutes here. I blocked out an hour to talk to you fine folks, and we've still got quite a few people watching. So thank you all for joining me. This is fun. This is, this is the first uh, Instagram live that I've ever done. Uh, this is also the first live Q&A that I've ever done where I have to hold it up with my hand instead of using my laptop. So I hope you all are enjoying the oblique look at my face every so often. But, um... <laughs> all right, so one person said, can we have a button to just execute like 300 colonists on our planet because why not? And I think we found the bad guy. It's always a fun game. Spot the bad guy whenever you're watching a movie. I think we found the bad guy in this community. <laughs> um, all right, here's another question. On a scale of 1 to 10, in your opinion, how realistic is Terragenesis? And how realistic were you planning to make it? Um, you know, it's kind of an interesting question because there are, you know, it's sort of an open question around what, what is realistic in terms of oversimplification? You know, like obviously a lot of games are, you know, like even a NASA flight simulator can be super realistic, except for the fact that it doesn't factor in, you know, like food. It's just a flight simulator. It doesn't factor in the, the you know, in-flight meals and all that kind of stuff. They just left it out. Does that make it not realistic? Um, anyway, the... I'd say on a scale of 1 to 10, Terra Genesis, I'd probably put it like a 7 or an 8. There are a few things that we, there obviously, there's a lot that we omitted. You can't simulate an entire planet on your phone. But uh, there's also, there are a few things that we changed deliberately to make it better gameplay. For example, when you change the oxygen level of your atmosphere, it changes the color of your atmosphere. That's not really a thing. Oxygen doesn't really influence the color of your atmosphere like that. We just needed a way to indicate oxygen levels like visibly on, on the planet as you change them. So we did some stuff like that. Um, and then obviously when you get into the furthest quarters, there's like the Travis one system has a alien race that is obviously not realistic. But for the most part, uh, I tried to stick to realism wherever possible and wherever it wouldn't directly hinder gameplay. That is a big part of the fun of Terra Genesis for me. It's like, okay, you wanna, you wanna add like evolution? Let's add evolution. How do we do that in a game context? So, yeah. Coming up with those kind of answers is like my favorite part of game design. So figuring out how to simulate things as a game. Let's see, what else? 
how do you feel about players aiming for every ribbon on every world? I love it. It's super impressive whenever anybody posts the screenshot and is like, here are all my ribbons. It's really awesome. I mean, that's why we added the ribbons, is to encourage that kind of completionism. Uh, I'm super impressed whenever anybody can pull that kind of thing off, so it's always exciting to see. Uh, are there any plans in the near future to rework the UI to make it more convenient for, for players? Yes. <laughs> uh, for five years, players have been asking us to redo the UI. This is one of the problems that happens when you make a game all by yourself. The UI makes total sense to me. Why didn't it make sense to you guys? Makes sense to me. I'm the only person on the planet who thinks the UI to Terra Genesis makes sense. People have been <laughs> telling me that ever since it first came out. I just don't know how to adjust it because it makes sense to me. That being said, our publisher has recently brought in some new developers, and one of the things that they're going to be doing is revamping some of the UI. So stay tuned. It's going to be a good time. We're finally going to get a UI that is less basic. Is there a Terra Genesis book in development? I would love for that to be true. It's not currently true, but we'll see what the future holds. Mm. Are there any interesting lore factoids that most people wouldn't know? There are so many. I can't begin to describe to you how much, how deep we've gone into the lore of this game, and I'm blaming Heather. <laughs> I enjoy doing the lore, but Heather goes on these deep dives where I'm just like, hey, wouldn't this be cool? And then they, she goes off for a long weekend and she comes back and she's like, F -f -f -f, and here's 60 pages of lore about it. And I'm like, Bruh. she basically wrote the Gaian Bible all by herself. It's crazy. So yes, there is a lot of stuff and we're going to be adding it um, as, you know, as time goes on, we're going to be rolling out more and more of the lore. So, doo, 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 doo. shout out from South Africa. Do you have any plan, plans for underwater cities, Atlantis kind of vibes? That's been a big uh, request that we've gotten over the years is either to make the cities survive water or to be able to build specifically underwater cities. It's something that I've toyed around with. To be perfectly honest, the reason that I don't do it is, well, there are two reasons. First is, it's actually not that scientifically accurate. If you look at like what it takes to build a city in space and what it takes to build a city underwater, they are radically different things. You can't just take a, like a submarine and put it in space and have it work. Um, you know, in space, you have to hold pressure in. Underwater, you have to hold pressure out. Water is deeply corrosive. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. Um, heat diffusion, for example, water is really good at sucking heat out of things. Space is actually really bad. Space is like a good insulator, so you have to have systems to get rid of the heat. Uh, so if you put something that was designed for space under the water, all of a sudden it would, like all the heat would get sucked out of it because it wasn't expecting that kind of thermal diffusion. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. So on the one hand, scientific accuracy is one reason that we don't do it. The other is just because of gameplay, is because the, the risk of raising your sea level and flooding your cities is sort of one of the big challenges of Terra Genesis. That's one of the things that can go really wrong in the game. And so if we added underwater cities, it would just sort of take out that mechanic. You just wouldn't need to worry about it. And that's kind of lame. Like it would be cool in the moment to have your city not die, but uh, overall from a game design standpoint, it just sort of takes something away without adding much. So, yeah. Um, but it is something that, you know, if, if we come up with a cool design for it, we'll definitely add it. Let's see. Um, <laughs> uh, love this game. Beat it a few months ago. Any new changes being made? Well, what did you beat a few months ago? Did you just beat Mars? Because there are 50 planets in this game. So uh, come back and check out some of the others. But definitely new changes being made. We've got a new development team working on the game alongside me, and they're going to be adding new features and all sorts of stuff where I'm really excited to see what they can come up with. You know, I'm a self-taught developer, which is really cool. Like, hey, I taught myself in my spare time. It's like cool bragging rights and stuff. But the downside of that is that you don't know what you don't know. And it's like, I only know how to do the stuff that I know how to do. And... I don't have any like coworkers that I can ask how to do stuff or other people that I've worked with that I can call and be like, hey, can you, you wanna come work at my company? Or, you know, like there's all this stuff that 
if you went to school for it, if you, if you had it as a job that, you know, you have these extra things. And so anyway, our publisher is bringing on new developers to work on Terra Genesis to help me out because I'm losing my mind. And I'm really excited to see what they come up with because they know how to do things that I don't know how to do. So they're going to be adding a bunch of new features and we will see where that goes. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's see. What happens if you finish all the solar system planets? Um, you move on to the next. You can you go play Trappist-1, go play Historical Earths, or the fictional planets, or the random planet generator. There's so many worlds in this game, oh my god. And some of them have unique storylines. Trappist-1 is a bundle that you don't just terraform the planet. There's actually alien artifacts that you're having to fight against and all sorts of cool stuff. So definitely check those out. Um, where can I say the vulnerabilities to help you guys? I assume by that you mean bug reports. If you're talking about reporting a bug uh, in the game, if you tap on the top right corner to go into the view planet mode, there's a question mark button. That's where you can go report bugs. So if you found a bug, uh, send a report through there, send a screenshot, whatever, and we will check it out. Do, 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 do. I love your game so much I spent hundreds on currencies. Thank you for your support. Uh, it has always been really important to me that people can play Terra Genesis without spending a lot of money. That being said, people who do spend money are the ones who pay our bills, so thank you. You uh, allow all of this to be possible by buying Genesis points and such, so thank you. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da. Let's see, we've got more coming in. Hey, more questions. Will mining ever get a rework? Man, I hope so. Boring as hell. <laughs> I, I've given longer answers to that question in the past, but I feel like every time somebody asks, I just give shorter and shorter answers. And at this point, I'm just like, yeah, mining sucks. <laughs> yeah, we should revamp it. I could give you excuses. I could explain what was going on through my mind, but no, it's just bad. It's just bad. Any new plans for the new year? Many. What's your favorite LTE? Hmm. Um, I'd have to say probably the, maybe the FFI, the Lava World LTE. That one's a lot of fun. Lava Worlds are just so gorgeous to look at. So yeah, that one maybe. I don't know. It's a tricky, tricky question. That's a new one. Let's see here. Do the governors live forever? Okay, so this is a question that we've gotten before, and I know that we have at least one or two lore masters here in the chat with us, so I will go on the record and answer the question of, do governors live forever? And the answer is, kind of. No, uh, the answer is no, the characters don't live forever. That being said, they don't all live at the same time either. So basically the model that we were working off of was the Civilization games. And anybody who's ever played the Civilization games knows that when you pick a nation to play as, you, you get their leader. So like if you're playing as the English, maybe you're playing as Queen Elizabeth. If you're playing as the Romans, you've got Julius Caesar. If you're playing as the Americans, you might have Abraham Lincoln. But they don't live for just one lifetime. Abraham Lincoln is the leader of the Americans from 10,000 BC all the way into the future. And Julius Caesar is doing his thing back during the time of the legions, but then he's still there in the time of jet airplanes and tanks. It's just the faction leader. It's the leader of the nation is one of those. And they just sort of like wink and let everybody understand that, you know, people don't actually live this long, but it's a video game. So yeah, Julius Caesar is the leader of the Romans and he always will be. He's not gonna have any successors. That's basically the doctrine that we used for the governors. So in our lore, in our story, and in the stories that we tell in the limited time events and other things, we have an understanding that like, okay, you know, this character is maybe a contemporary of Nubia Matiba and Apollo Matiba is her grandfather. So like that character and Apollo Matiba might not be alive at the same time. Um, so yeah, there are characters that in the lore lived during the Sundering at sort of the beginning of the, the Terra Genesis universe. And then there are people who lived hundreds of years after the Sundering, and you can have both of them as governors on your planet. That's not to say that they live for centuries, and it's not to say that they lived at the same time. It's just that these are all characters in the Terra Genesis universe, and 
you know, there you go. It's very much the same way that you can play a Star Trek game and you could put Captain Kirk on the ship alongside Seven of Nine. And the fact that they're separated by centuries, eh, who cares? Like, they're all Star Trek characters. We want to use them all in the game. That's, that's kind of how we went with Terra Genesis. These are all characters that exist on our lore. Doesn't really matter that they all lived exactly the same time. We just keep them in there. So that is the answer about governor lifespans. And I know that that makes some people frustrated because it's like, okay, well then when do they live? I just assumed they were all living at the same time. They don't. Ha ha, your job got harder. Let's see. Any other option of multiplayer mode other than tournaments planned? Um, you know, people have asked for like a competitive mode or a race mode or like uh, two people playing on the same world so they can mess each other up, like one playing Gaian and one playing Hephaestion or something like that mode. Would be cool, but honestly, it's one of those things that kind of is like we would have to completely rebuild the game. So, I don't know. Here's, here's the thing. I've never done multiplayer. Me, Alexander Wynn, myself, I have never done a multiplayer game. We had a guy on the team for a little while who had done, and he was the guy who, like, implemented cloud save and some of that kind of stuff. So, that's cool. And now that our publisher is bringing on more developers, I don't know. Maybe they've done multiplayer games. I haven't actually asked. So, who knows? Maybe we'll see more multiplayer features in the future. I just don't know how to do it myself. So asking me, hey, are you going to add multiplayer functionality is kind of like asking, like, you know, your friend who works as an accountant exactly how they're going to add an addition onto their house. He's like, I don't know. I'm not a carpenter. Like, that's kind of how I am with multiplayer. It's like, yeah, it would be cool. I don't know how to do it. Let's see. Um, I'm a new player and can't seem to even get past the point of getting humans on there. Yeah, um, there are video tutorials on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash edgeworks entertainment. And there are also uh, fan communities. There's a Facebook fan group, there's a subreddit, there's a bunch of places where you can post questions. So uh, definitely jump on there and uh, they can help you out. Uh, somebody says, my, my connection is breaking up. I'm going to have to stop watching. Will this go up on YouTube later? I think it will. I'm not recording this, which really, probably I should have done. But uh, I think Heather or Chelsea or somebody is recording this. If anybody's recording this, we'll upload it on YouTube. I think somebody is. So, yeah. Um... Somebody says, can you check my question up? Uh, you may need to repost your question because these comments are coming really quickly and I can only see like three at a time on my screen. So, um, yeah. A couple of people have asked what inspired the game. To be perfectly honest, this is one of those things that you hear people saying every so often, you know, like, I wrote the book that I wanted to read or that kind of thing. I wanted to play a game about terraforming and I kept assuming that somebody would make a game about terraforming. And then I kind of looked up one day and I went, oh, I guess I actually have gotten to the point where I could make the game about terraforming. Okay. Uh, big inspirations include the Mars trilogy of novels by Kim Stanley Robinson, Red Mars, Green Mars, Blue Mars, and the video game Alpha Centauri. Um, yeah, a bunch of stuff like that. So a bunch of things uh, inspired it, but in terms of directly, it was just I wanted to play this game. <laughs> uh, let's see. Are there plans to have lore spread in other forms besides governor posts and LTE planet packs, small stories and stuff? Yes, there are some plans. We haven't settled on exactly what they're going to be, but I would love to do more lore, and I hope to. It's all just a question of how do we do it in a way that is good. That's not just like, hey, Alexander's going to tell you a story. Like, it's going to be, you know, you got to do it in a way that's actually cool. So. Do, do, do. <clears throat> uh, what are the birth rate transmissions? <laughs> are the passing ships transmitting subliminal suggestions? Or, you know, that's a good question. A lot of people have, have asked over the like year and a half since that feature was added, what kind of a video would make people make more babies? I, mm, that's an interesting idea. What kind of movie would people watch and then Go make babies. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I had, didn't really put in too much thought into what the birth rate bonus would be. Um, if you're into it, maybe it's like a, you know, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a series of medical documentaries about proper childbirth procedures and that sort of thing. <laughs> 
what do you think about the casting competition slash doppelganger contest so far? It's so much fun, you guys. I love fan art, I love fan casting, I love all that stuff. And it's been so much fun watching people come up with ideas and I just, I get so excited. You know, some, some creators, some game developers and writers and TV showrunners and filmmakers get really kind of like protective of their stuff and like they don't want anybody sort of contributing to their stuff and I am exactly the opposite. I love it when people come up with things to add to the lore of Terra Genesis. And by the way, for those of you who don't know, Fans have made actual additions to the lore of Terra Genesis. There's a governor named Steve who is just a creation of one of our fans on Facebook. So, you know, keep it coming. It may end up making its way into the game. Do, 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 do. All right, we're going to be wrapping up here in just a minute. Um, i got a few last questions. Uh, are the aliens in the random generator uh, need the same stats as humans? No, they don't. That's part of the fun of the native system is they have their own needs that are different from humans. Uh, could we have the possibility to create aliens in the biosphere section? Biosphere leading to natives could be cool. Hey, I'll think about that. Uh, would it be fun? It would, be, would it be possible to walk around on the surface of your planet? I would love to do that if we just had the art department that would be necessary to make it. And uh, yeah, I think that is just about it. I'm going to go ahead and say thank you everybody for watching. This has been super fun. We're doing these kind of videos once a month on different platforms. So stay tuned and see what is coming up next, what platform we'll be on. In the meantime, definitely check out youtube.com slash edgeworks entertainment. We've got a bunch of new shows like The Synthesis, like Slice of Science. We've got a bunch of stuff that we're putting out, all that would appeal to players of Terra Genesis. And we've got a live Twitch show on Thursday nights. We've got a whole bunch of stuff. So thanks for tuning in. Check it out. And as always, happy terraforming. <laughs>